Hello good people, welcome back to this fragrant little corner on the internet called My World of Fragrance. I did a little poll for my patrons, love you patrons, um, over on Patreon on which fragrance note you would like me to focus on next, and Iris won. Yay! I love Iris, I've got a ton of Iris fragrances that I would like to share with you guys, and it might come off as somewhat of a surprise for those of you who used to watch my earlier videos because you might think, okay, all this girl wears is oud and woody fragrances, but actually no, I do enjoy the delicate iris. Iris is definitely a more intellectual floral, I will say. Florals tend to be, you know, they tend to break through roses and tuberose and ylang ylang. A lot of florals are very heady, but the iris is more of a delicate floral. It requires you to sit back and ponder a little bit. Iris to me smells like gentle kindness, thoughtfulness, uh, it's poetic, and it also smells really classy. It smells like old money, okay? So yes, iris fragrances whisper, they do not shout. Do not try to make them shout or you will be disappointed, um, but I will go through the ones that I absolutely love. So the entry-level iris fragrance for me, and I think for a lot of people, was Enfusion d'Iris by Prada. And this is iris with citruses. Um, iris is known to have a, if you're talking about the floral scent, it's known to have a somewhat powdery feel to it. And to me, it literally smells like old money, you know, like a dry wad of money. <laughs> so uh, that in combination with citruses makes this one a very versatile iris. It's great in the summertime. It reminds me of uh, Italian countryside. I like to spray this on my linens. I like to opt for the 200 ml bottle of this one because I'm just obsessed with the scent. Uh, it's kind of impersonal. Iris can be impersonal, a little bit aloof, a little bit cold and standoffish. It's the kind of personality that you need to take time to get to know. To me, is the person who wears Iris. I feel like a lot of women get to know Iris through Enfusion d'Iris, and then a lot of men get to know Iris through the Diorum line, which is also an amazing uh, incorporation of Iris. So this is like a fresher Iris. The Diorum line focuses on more of a cosmetic -y Iris. Essentially, Diorum fragrances smell like really expensive makeup. So that just goes to show the interchangeability of, you know, if you put a certain label on something, you can get anyone to wear anything. Um, so for me, all of these are very unisex. Enfusion d'Iris absolutely can be worn by anyone. And Diorum, if you go for the Intense or the Parfums, I think can be worn by anyone as well. So now that we've cleared up the entry-level iris fragrances, let us take a deep dive into true iris fragrances and I actually am shocked by how many iris fragrances I actually ended up having, but yeah, this is a beautiful multifaceted flower. It is often combined with violet when it is meant to go in the powdery direction, and it can be more leathery if you take more of the rooty, orris rooty type of scent. So I will go into these different categories. So a true iris for me is the classic Iris by Hermes. I cherish this iris. It smells like a person who cannot do any wrong. It is a true form. Um, some people will describe iris as somewhat carroty. It can be a little bit suede. It can be, I'm thinking kind of like crayon-y, if you understand what I mean. For me, when people describe it as carroty, I actually get more nutty. It smells a little bit nutty. So for me, this is uh, the iris flower and with that warm nuttiness and it still has that aloofness to it it still has that iris pensiveness to it that isn't like super welcoming but it smells very clean and it smells it smells just inviting in in a different way in a very subtle way so this is the kind of fragrance like i said you know iris whispers it does not shout and iris is an absolute delicate beautiful iris for definite iris purists. So the next iris fragrance that I wanted to bring to your attention is Fleur de Peau by Diptyque. This one is quite popular and it is iris with muskiness, a little bit of sweetness, invitingness. It's kind of like Diptyque has taken iris and wanted to make it, you know, warm and cozy and cuddly. This is a good your skin but better scent. It's a good signature scent as well. 
I think that Iris in general makes great signature fragrances because it is that that personal feeling. It feels like a very personal fragrance with Iris. So I really adore this one by Diptyque and I would have it if, you know, I didn't have so many fragrances. Then we have another big brand Iris fragrance and this one is number 19 Poudre by Chanel. This was probably my first ever proper iris fragrance. Number 19 itself has iris in it, but Poudre definitely amps up that iris. It, you know, it says Poudre, it's powdery, so iris lends that powdery feel to a lot of fragrances, and it definitely does in Poudre. When I wasn't ready to wear the full-on madameness of number 19, my mother's signature fragrance, one of her signatures, I opted for number 19 Poudre because it was that little bit softer. It was something that I felt that I could wear at a younger age as well. So I feel like this is a really nice, versatile version of the green galbanum iciness of number 19, um, which is a green fragrance. As you can see with the juice, it is very well represented in the bottle. And yeah, so green and powdery and just a lovely iris, soapy as well. It has that Chanel soapiness to it and smells really classy. So love this one. It reminds me of a certain time in my life too. So now we have another cult classic. Uh, this is from Guernin. It is called L'Heure Bleu. If you know your classics, you absolutely know what I'm talking about here. I have the EDT. I probably want to get the extrait. I say this every time I mention a Guernin EDT that I'd love to have all of the extraits. L'Heure Bleu is iris in a floral bouquet with violet and carnation and neroli and uh, it's a haunting fragrance this is this is the kind of fragrance where i wouldn't say no it's not an iris soliflor like some of the others but it is just worth a mention and i haven't spoken about leur bleu in any of my videos yet i believe so yeah if you want to be taken back to 1912 riding a train in the midnight through Siberia, looking out the window, thinking about your loved one, then <laughs> try out L'Heure Bleu because it, it's an evocative fragrance, uh, one that really moves emotions. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying the EDT first. This is just the one that I could get my hands on. As you can see, I don't have a lid or anything. Um, I found it in an auction, but the EDP, the extrait, Try, try to try some of the more potent forms of L'Heure Bleu. It's, it's, you know, it's about the midnight hour and um, sitting in moonlight, smelling this powdery melange mixed with florals. And I get a lot of prominent carnation. Carnation smells somewhat cinnamony. It's, it's the red flower that, um, yeah, it smells kind of cinnamony. So yeah, yesteryear, but forever classic. So the next fragrance I wanted to highlight is an example of iris when it takes on a leathery form. This is still the iris flower to me, but orris root, which we'll get into, smells a little bit more buttery. It smells more like the actual, you know, root of the iris flower and it has a different texture to it. So the flower itself is a little bit more that aloof powderiness, that, that blue vision that you have of the flower itself, whereas orris root is that creaminess. And this one is that flower, but combined with leather. And I feel like I've heard that orris is often used to create the leather accord as well in perfumes. So this is Iris Prima by Penhaligans. It's a classic. This one is um, inspired by ballet slippers, um, the leatheriness of ballet slippers. So it's it was an ode to the ballet, uh, and to me it evokes that scent of ballet slippers. So very beautiful iris uh, with leather, gentle again. It's the little tiptoeing of the ballerina on the stage where you get some of the splinters of the woodiness as well. Um, little accents. It's one of Penhaligon's best fragrances, best works, and I adore it. The next fragrance is moving into Iris with the combination of woodiness. This one is from a brand that is, you know, quote unquote niche, uncommercial, so they have not targeted it to anyone. But if it was released out in the commercial world, they would probably write for women on it because, you know, Iris is a floral and women wear florals. Um, so yes, let's step out of those boundaries and 
try out Bois d'Iris. If you are a person who enjoys vetiver, if you enjoy cedar and fragrances, and you would like to venture into a little bit of iris, this one is beautiful. Again, delicate, very nuanced. These uh, fragrances by the different company were created by Jean-Claude Elena. And so if you're looking for a subtle play on iris um, with, again, that woodiness, a little bit of muskiness in the dry down as well, then check out Bois d'Iris. I mean, all of these would make incredible signature fragrances. Definitely, if you're looking for a signature, something that is versatile, you can wear all year round to all kinds of occasions, inoffensive, then absolutely seek out Iris. So the next fragrance is a combination of that Iris floral, so the you know floral top that I was trying to describe earlier, and then Oris root as well. And this is La Tesa by Mask Milano. I have quite a few fragrances from this line and it's actually like mm, <laughs> actually quite embarrassing how many of their fragrances I really enjoy. But La Tesa is is delicate, but I've seen a lot of gentlemen of Freycom really rate this one highly. I think it's because of that leathery orisness of this uh, fragrance. And it's called La Tesa, the wait, waiting, pondering. Again, Iris is like, you're sitting and looking out the window, waiting for something, longing for something. Deep in thought, it is, yes, so poetic. Perfect for writing down some poetry. Um, La Tesa, what else can I say about this one? I mean, it's very long lasting. <laughs> Uh, a lot of these are, I will let you know if something is very fleeting or incredibly long lasting. But otherwise I will say that a lot of these are average, moderate projection. Um, the Mask Milanos usually pack quite a punch. So yeah, like this one, La Teza. The next fragrance I mentioned in my winter perfume edit, I believe, um, but I just wanted to mention it quickly here just to give you another example of how Oris is used in fragrance. So this is called Impression Cedarwood Heart. It is um, around cedarwood, but they've used a lot of Oris in this fragrance to ground it. So it has that butteriness, that suede mmm, delicious Orisness. It just, it, it brings up, you know, pictures of like a tan suede on the interior of a car. Um, kind of thing. So in combination with woodiness, here we have another example of iris, except it's oris, not the iris flower. And um, yeah, a really nice, they're trying to create a nostalgic feel, old time glamour. And you can see why if you look back at fragrances like Leur Bleu, which contained iris and had that, you know, old school glamour to it. So it's nice to see these things continued into new brands. I actually have a travel size version of Nuit Bleu by Maison Violet, and this is a nice alternative to Prada's Enfusion d'Iris. If you are looking for something slightly more citrusy than that, I get a lot of citruses in Nuit Bleu, but some people get more iris in this one. I do get iris, but it's definitely a citrusy summer fragrance with underpinning iris. So if you are looking for citruses with a little bit of iris, then I would recommend trying out Nuit Bleu by Maison Beauty. Very nice. So back to the Oris. <laughs> we have Oris Tattoo number 29 by Parle-moi de Parfum. This one was an easy sell for me. I sprayed this on for the first time on my way out the door for a walk in like mild weather, springtime, light jacket type of thing. And I realized that I really enjoy the scent of Oris when I am walking outside, when I'm out in nature. So Oris tattoo is basically Oris, 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 lots of it, that earthy iris, root of the iris flower. And it's buttery, it's got depth, but it doesn't, it's not colorful, if you know what I mean. It's not, it's not a colorful, type of personality. It's it's a deep in thought, focused. I think that's what I use this for, for focus. <laughs> Oris on the way out the door when you want to bring it good thoughts. This is a really nice one. It's definitely a linear scent. It's definitely for the true Oris lovers. And if you want to get an indication of what Oris smells like, get a sample of Oris tattoo. The next fragrance is called Captive Number no. One, and it is by the Berlin brand called Schwarzlose that do pretty cool fragrances, kind of experimental. 
um, and different. And this is Iris with pepper. And I love black peppered fragrances. I love pink pepper as well. I think it adds a really cool edge and character to something. And so I was delighted to find an Iris with pepper. I find that pepper on its own can be so brash that I often recommend it to gentlemen who are looking to make a statement, but still be you know well fitted for the corporate world. Uh, but yes, this is a pepper that I can wear because it has that inclusion of iris and it's just gorgeous. Captive number one. And now we have another iris that is super interesting. It is called Silver Iris by Atelier Cologne, one of my earlier iris purchases as well. This one is a metallic -y iris. It's iris that's met with violet leaf, it has this zinginess. It is as cold and metallic as the exterior. It's just a really cool jazzy iris. Um, there's black currant in there. There's patchouli. It's not the iris purist representative, but it is a cool segue into iris. If again, you're looking uh, for that. And Atelier Cologne is quite widespread now as a brand. so. I think that if you're looking for iris, you would be able to find this more readily available. But I am aware that Serge Dutens has their iris as well. What's it called? Iris Silver Mist. But I'm not in a hurry to try all of the iris fragrances in the world, all the fragrances in the world <laughs> for that matter. I am going to wait until I can go to Paris to the flagship store of Serge Dutens and try it there. So the last iris fragrance that we have is the king or queen the one that takes the crown it is the iris it is known to be the iris it is iris des champs by Ubigon, old traditional fragrance house this fragrance um it's actually the exclay that i have exclay or parfum they have a high dosage of good raw materials in this fragrance and you can smell that it is poetic it is beautiful it is the iris, it is clean. It just represents the iris very, very well. I do prefer the Parfum or the Extrait to the EDP. And yeah, this fragrance pretty much makes me want to cry <laughs> every time that I smell it. It's not one that I, like I save this one for myself. And that's when you know that it's one of my prized fragrances when I wear it for myself, because I'm too selfish <laughs> to want to wear it out with other people who may not appreciate it as much. Um, but yes, Iris Deschamps, a classic iris for you. And there we go. Those are my favorite iris fragrances. I, of course, do not have all of the iris fragrances in the world, and I am not trying to. I have plenty here. So please share your favorite iris perfumes with me down below. Let's have a nice conversation about iris fragrances and also give me your feedback on this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next review.